Hello and God bless you all. This is Blake Wimberly. I'm married to Hilda Iris Flores Wimberly. We've been together for two years. I've been going to Shadow Mountain Community Church now for 11 years. And my wife has been going, she's on her seventh year going to Shadow Mountain Community Church. And we've been going ever since. So, uh, what I want to start off is by, um, as, as most of you know, most of you that live in San Diego, California, there is a Christian artist, I believe he's been here since, I think maybe the early 2000s or probably the 80s, somewhere around there. Um, anyways, he goes by the name of Toby Mac. Now... I get it, you know, Toby Mac is doing what he can to give positivity music out there. He's trying to reach people for Christ with his music, and that's all fine and dandy. <sighs> but I have a problem, though, with the way he lyrically writes music. Um, like for instance, there's a song, I believe from him called Boogie Jesus or something like that. Very, very bizarre name. So he, he basically kind of talks about like, I want to boogie on down. We're going to boogie on down for Jesus. And it's like, I get that you want to celebrate and celebrate your, um, salvation, all that. But in reality of all this it is pragmatism to the one of to the most highest extent now i am not against um people wanting to worship the lord with music and song and everything that's fine in in nehemiah chapters 7 to 8 we see that the people were gathering getting musicians together and they all came together at the temple to worship however it was to center on the preaching of the word because in Nehemiah 8.8 8, it says that Ezra opened up the open up the scroll and he, so he would translate to the people so they would understand the reading of the law that's what worship is to be entitled and plus I don't even read you guys in Psalm 33 about the uh, about also a very great example of what worship is supposed to be of why you make music to the Lord why you um, do these things and I actually wrote a whole sermon about this and I'm probably gonna present it at uh, nowmentor.com which by the way it's gonna be another update we're gonna do so anyways um, going on to this in Psalm 33 it says, starting in verse 1, the beginning, Sing for joy in the Lord, O you righteous ones. Praise is up, becoming to the upright, or those that have been saved by God's righteousness. Give thanks to the Lord with a lawyer, or a lawyer is a ten-string instrument. It was like a harp back then. It was like a little miniature harp that they would play. Sing praises to him with a harp of ten strings. Sing to him. A new song plays skillfully with a shout of joy, for the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. Verse 5, he loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. Then we'll stop at, um, stop at verse 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made by the breath of his mouth, all their hosts. So you see why he's telling us to make music. It's not so then you can show off your musical talent. Though, of course, it's, it's wonderful if you have a musical talent. Great. But notice that after he talks about sing to him with a new song, play skillfully with a shout of joy, he then gets into the reasons. Reason. And one of the reasons is, for the word of the Lord is upright. The word of the Lord is true. The word of God remains true. That's why we're to sing to him. We're to worship him. Music is is an expression of worship. Music is not worship in itself. Worship is what we do with our lives to the glory of God. Not It's not a concert. It's not entertainment as we make it so out to be. It's not going to your favorite 
Christian musical artist and feeling some sort of sensation and all that. No, it is to really worship God for all that he has done because his, because his, his word is upright. It's true. It's, it can be trusted. Then notice it says, and all his work is done in faithfulness. So not only is his work done in truth, not only is his word upright, not only is his word can be trustworthy, but all his work is done in faithfulness. It's faithfully crafted and carefully crafted. In Psalm 19 verse 1 it says, At the heavens declare the glory of God, the handiwork is in the firmament. He did that faithfully. When he made the, the heavens and the earth, he did it faithfully when he created us, and he did it faithfully when, when using men to write out the written revelation in God's word. And so, according to Second Peter chapter 1, verse 21, and so these are the really the reasons why we worship God in our lives. And you don't have to go to a Toby Mac concert for this. You don't have to go to um, a Striper concert, which if you go back to the 80s, it's a glam metal band that made Christian music by using electric guitars and all that. And those things, um, they can be used in worship. But the question is, is that what is the object of your worship? Are you doing this so then you can get all the credit? Are you doing this because... It, do you want to be the star of the show or do you want Jesus Christ to be the worship leader? Do you want his word to be the worship leader or do you want to be the attention grabber and want to be the so-called worship leader yourself? Or do you want Jesus Christ to be the worship leader? Who do you want in your church to be the worship leader? You or God himself? And then notice, he loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. So, not only he does things in faithfulness, but notice, he loves righteousness and justice. We serve a God who loves righteousness. He is the God of righteousness. He, when we worship, we are to be reminded that this is a God who is the final standard of all that is right. This is the final standard of all that is, is true. And even going on back at verse 4, for the word of the Lord is upright. And because of that, he loves righteousness and justice. Because, G because God is the definition of righteousness and justice. So therefore, when we sing to him, when we give glory and honor and praise to him, that it's not just an emotional experience. It is rather to truly worship God for all of who he is. Not because you focus on just this attribute or that attribute and you just want to focus on God's love and you just want to focus on um just the love of God and all that. No, you focus also on his justice and his righteousness because he loves righteousness and justice. He loves it. He loves what is just because he himself is just. He's just in everything. Which reminds me, in Psalm 51, we read, this, after, you know, David sinned against Bathsheba, we see in uh, Psalm 51, verse 4, Against you, you only, I have sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified when you speak and blameless when you judge. You see, Jesus Christ is the blameless judge that judges all things, judges all things rightly. Judges all things in accordance to his will and to his glory and to his purposes. Therefore, when you worship him, you are to worship him rightly. That worship is to be an offering to God, not entertainment to man. So that's why, guys, I, I'm not a big fan of these so-called Christian concerts with Toby Mac and all this other stuff. I'm not a big fan of these Christian concerts. I mean, 
if they are if they are concerts that there is the reading of the scriptures and the songs um you know glorify god okay great but a, a concert like toby mac and all the guys from most christian radio most of them their songs do not glorify god like what to, what, another another song by toby mac is speak life okay well how do we do that well, in his song, is all about encouragement. The problem is, however, is where's true encouragement at? Romans ten seventeen, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. And then back in verse fourteen of John chapter ten of Romans chapter ten, it says, "How will they hear without a preacher?" So really, the encouragement needs to be from the word of God. The the encouragement needs to be from the gospel. Speaking life into someone isn't in just worldly encouragement. The only one that can truly speak life is God himself. Remember Genesis chapter 2? I, I sound like a broken record because I made mention on this on my systematic theology course and now mentor.com. But you remember in Genesis chapter 2 that he made man from the ground and breathed him the breath of life. So you see, God is the one that when he breathes into the human soul, he's the one that makes somebody live eternally and physically. So the real speaking life into someone is speaking them the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the real life. What's And what's the purpose of just speaking to them, speaking to them just positivity? Anybody can do that. But to actually spend time and give somebody biblical counsel through God's word is even better. The problem is today is many people, and even I've dealt with a lot of them, do not think the Bible is, do not believe that the Bible is sufficient. That's why, you know, they wait to go to these concerts. They wait to go to see their pastor on Sunday. And I'm not saying the preaching of the word this is not important. I'm not saying that First Timothy chapter five verse seventeen, which says that give a double honor to anyone, uh, especially preaching and teaching. I'm not neglecting that. The problem is that because people don't study the scriptures for themselves, they don't know the will of God. They don't know what God has commanded. They don't know, and so therefore, because they don't know these things, they wait to go see their pastor. They wait to go to a concert. Just to get some feel-good message, but they won't do what the Bible actually says. Because it's all about feelings and emotions and experiences, rather than obeying the scriptures and saying, God, your word is enough, I will obey it. They won't do it. Because they're emotionally manipulated. They won't do it. They go with their emotions rather than what God's word actually says. I've seen it happen too often. That's a sad reality in our world, folks, so... Um, so then really quickly then, moves on, uh, Camilado Mina Jamunels, God bless, welcome to the q and if you have any questions on prayer requests, please leave down in the comments section below, and will get to you as soon as possible. Then we see that, not only does express that he loves righteousness, and loving, and justice, and the earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord, because, well, also too, is common grace. He lets it rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. As a sun to shine on the righteous and the unrighteous, and it's to demonstrate to us that we are to love one another. God bless you, brother. God bless you too. Thank you. Um, just sharing my thoughts about the artist called Toby Mac. What are my thoughts on the concert and, and all that? So, and Adam Vita, God bless. Welcome to the QA. If you have any questions, have any prayer requests, please leave it down in the comments section below. I'll get to you as soon as possible. Then, sixthly, we get in Psalm 33, verse 6, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth all their host. So you see, we also worship because God is our creator. We don't worship him just by, again, playing on a guitar or playing some sort of, you know, instrument. And again, I'm not against those things. But the problem is, again, where is the center <laughs> worship that's what we have to ask ourselves every
single day. What is the center of our worship? Is the center of our worship um, boogieing for Jesus? Or is it really on who God is? Is it really because he is the creator, master, and Lord? As it says in, in an old hymn, invisible, God only wise. Or how about another one from the 1500s? A mighty fortress is our God. Do we really worship God for who he is? Or do we have to wait for some concert to tell us who our God is? Do we have to wait for some pastor to tell us who our God is? Or will we actually read the written word of God for ourselves to know who this God is? And I'm not saying you can't read B.B. Warfield, you can't read the Puritans, you can't read any of those things. But are you yourself studying the scriptures to know who God is? Or do you just simply, you just wait on your pastor to tell you who he is? And again, oh, praise God. Thank you. Thank you for coming on and watching from all the way from Puerto Rico. So that's what I want to challenge you guys. Are you, are you learning who God is through his word, or do you have to wait to go to a Christian concert in order to know who he is? Or are you guys actually studying his word to know who he is? Or are you following the ways of the world? Are you following by going to these so-called Christian concerts and not developing your theology? That's what I want to challenge you with. Hail Holy, 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 sings the angels in heaven. Amen. That's right. Isaiah chapter 6. When it was in the day of Uzziah's king, King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, his train filling the robe, his robe, his uh, chain of the robe filling the temple, and the seraphim had six wings, two covering his eyes, two covering his feet. And the angels said to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Great reminder. Great reminder, Adam. Wonderful uh, reminders. Okay, so um, really quick reminder too. Also too, guys, is is don't forget, if you have any questions, have any prayer requests, please video down in the comments below. <laughs> I will get to you as soon as possible. Okay. And, and guys also too, with the Q and a, make sure that our discuss, if we ever do have discussions, do not turn it into slander. Cause I've actually had to block someone because, um, he was just very rude and very disrespectful. Um, and again, I don't mind having a debate, but if it turns into slander, I'm going to have to cut you off. Because that is not that is not Christian character, and first First Peter chapter three verse fifteen says, "But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, and 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 be ready to make a defense for anyone who asks you, but with meekness and respect." If I don't see that meekness and respect in the comment section, do not bother coming back, because I am not going to put up with that, and you will be blocked. I'm sorry, but that's the way it's got to be. If we truly want to do this in a a scholar a scholarly matter, if we want to do it in a true biblical matter, then we need to we need to be biblical and we need to be respectful towards one another. That doesn't mean you, you're an open minded and stuff, no, but it does mean that we need to have Christian character. And read that in Philippians true. And then read that even Ephesians three. And even John chapter 13, verse 35, Jesus even said, they will know you're my, you're my disciples if they have love for one another. So I just want us to obey those biblical commandments in this uh, Q&A session. So, all right. Well, uh, Jeremiah Sanchez, God bless. Welcome to Q&A. If you have any questions, I have a prayer request, please leave it down in the comments section below, and I'll get to you as soon as possible. And by the way, for this Q&A session, um, I'm probably going to stop somewhere around 4.30 or so because I'm going to go meet up with a friend over at the Reform, Reform Church, United Reform Church, 
we're in Sandy, California. Um, number one, to see him, but secondly, of course, to hear the preaching from Dr. William Godfrey, who is the son of Robert Godfrey. That's right. The one who teaches from Ligonier.org. So, and hopefully one of these days we can have a segment of church history with him on the Q&A session one of these days. So yeah, keep that in prayer, guys. Um, it's going to be great. So, all right. Now, uh, before I get into um, Hashmi and Pam, God bless. Welcome to Q&A. If you have any questions, have any prayer requests, please leave it down in the comments below. I'll get to you as soon as possible. Thanks. God bless. Um, also, guys, I don't know if you've seen it, but um, I have been doing a systematic theology course for nowmentor.com. And so uh, tomorrow at um, 6.30 p.m., if you go on to nowmentor.com during that time, uh, California time that is, I don't know where everybody else is watching from, you can catch the next session of, of Christology, the study of Jesus Christ. And last time we talked about the virgin birth, and it was incredible. Man, how can a man, how can God justify the wicked? Only through Christ. And that's what we ended on, on the last session. So you guys don't want to miss that. You can go and check it out on the Nail Mentor webs on the nailmentor.com uh, YouTube, YouTube uh, channel. And so, or you can go into mine on my YouTube channel, which is Blake Wimberly, and you'll see two playlists. One is for theology proper, and the second one is for Christology. So, if you if you missed all of the segments on theology proper, the study of God the Father, and if you missed the last two on Christology, you guys can check it out on my YouTube page. Um, and I also have posted many for the sessions on system on the systematic theology course that I've been giving on um, nowmentor.com. And plus, I'm doing this so then you guys don't have to go in $40,000 in debt like most uh, seminaries charge you. No, you can avoid being in debt, guys. You can avoid that. You can learn all about the God the Father. You can learn all about God the Son. And then, then soon, after we're done with God the Son, we're going to go to pneumatology, the study of God, the Holy Spirit. So you guys don't want to miss out on that. So again, tomorrow at 6.30 p.m., I'll be doing a session on Christology for nowmentor.com, and it will start at 6.30 tomorrow. So um, if anything comes up, I'll make sure to make a post on that because I might have to go pick up my car because I've been dealing with car issues. And so Lord willing... It will not cost too much <laughs> because my stick shift was not going out of park, so I had to take it to the take it to the um take it to the auto shop. So hopefully that won't interfere with the systematic theology course. So right, well, um, so you're probably wondering, Blake, what have you been reading? Well, let's first of all. Um, we're going to get to a, a book in a little bit. But first of all, I want to show you guys a book that you need, guys need to get in your library. The Forgotten Trinity by Dr. James R. White. Man, you have got to put this in your library as soon as possible. This has helped me so clearly in my teaching in the Trinity. Um, I've been so clear in the Trinity and just been defining the Trinity for people. And they are just like, wow. That's incredible. That's amazing. So, um, I want you guys to hear. Um, I'm, I'm starting to. Uh, what is it called? I'm almost done with chapter twelve, which talks about the three persons of the Trinity. So, I want to share a couple of things, so then you guys get a demo. Of what this book is like because this book is a definite must keep. Um, let's start off with uh, do, 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 do. let's go back and um, basically this great quote that deals with the Trinity, and it says regarding that closer look. Uh, nice, yeah, it's oh yeah, 
but I, it's, it's such a great book. I don't, I don't know if I can just say that it's nice. It's just, it's amazing. But you guys, you guys got to hear this because this is how it's always historically been known as is the Trinity. He goes on to write, I'm going to read a couple of, uh, things from this. So that way you get a demo of what the book is like. And that way, um, you'll know why I've been so equipped to now um, teach the Trinity and one day I'll have to probably defend the Trinity. So it just helps you to be prepared to do all that. So regarding that closer look and the context of the three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it goes on to say, and this is the classical definition of the Trinity, Within the one being that is God, there exists eternally three co-equal and co-eternal persons, namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this helps you guys to get away from the heresies that is so often um, when it comes to the Trinity. Of course, there's subordinationism, where you treat one person of the triune, the, the one person of the Godhead more important than the others you can't do that it's basically a a glorified and unified body and even the athanasius creed says that um what is it called that um that the unity is the trinity and the trinity is the in the unity so you want to make sure that you don't um go against any of the godhead but you want to make sure that you're respectful to all three and to know that they're all three in one. And it says right here, there's just three co-equal and co-eternal persons. So they're co-equal as in they share the same glory. And they're co-eternal persons, meaning all three of them also are eternal. And then Jesus, of course, says in John 8, 58, before Abraham was born, I am. And he also said in John 17, Father, give me the glory of once I had before the foundations of the earth. So, um, and then Adam Theodos says, I'm about to get a few book books on the Trinity. I'll make that one. Yes, make this one one of your top priority reads. You will not, um, you will not uh, regret getting this book. It, it's, it's amazing. And then one more is that God's being is not limited by time and space, but is eternal and without bounds, omnipresent, which means everywhere. So you guys want to make sure, again, you get this book in your library and make sure you're diligent in what you read, because this right here is going to help you to know the doctrine of the Trinity better. So then if uh, I see uh, Holly Rancherson, Hanson watching, God bless, welcome to the Q&A. If you have any questions or prayer requests, please leave it down in the comment section below. Because what if your daughter's like, well, why is it that Jesus is praying to the Father? Is he praying to himself? What? Why is he doing that? So it'll help you to answer these questions biblically and practically to where a child could understand it. Now, if you want a book on what Christians are going through in Pakistan, um, then I recommend you guys I, – I didn't read this book yet because I'm trying to get through the, 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 the Forgotten Trinity. But another book that um, I got in the mail and I need to get on this is that Christian Tears of Pakistan falsely accuse under blasphemy law to – 95 BC. You want to get this in your you want to get this in your library as well. Because if uh, uh hold on, Jacqueline Chambi, God bless, welcome to QA. If you have any questions, I have a prayer request, please leave it down in the comments section below. If you want to know what Christians are going through in Pakistan, then you want to get this in your in your library. It's from the author Um Amir Tabi, and he's actually a pastor over in Pakistan, and he's planted five churches over there. So what happens is that Islam, they love to form mobs together to go burn down Christians, decapitate Christians, and stone them to death. They're going so very severe persecution. 
And uh, and I mean, we got, let me give you an example. We got uh, jo Dr. John MacArthur who endorsed this book. We got um, Dr. Michael Brown that endorsed this book and uh, many others that have endorsed this book. Um, Brandon Kipp, who is my boss from NailMentor.com, has decided to come on. God bless. Uh, he's, by the way, guys, it's an honor to work with Brandon Kemp on NailMentor.com. He is just such a, um, what is it, such a supporter in the ministry that God has given to me. And he is just one of the people that God has used to... Um, to really just, uh, to really, say, um, hey brother, good to see you. Good to see you too, Brandon Kip. God bless. Thank you for coming on. So, uh, also guys, really quickly, that's my boss right there. Um, Brandon Kip. He's the one that's in charge of nowmentor.com. And, uh, we've been trying to get some great biblical content in there. So if you guys know of any other Bible teachers that are sound in theology, we would appreciate your input. And then you, they can email um, Brandon Kipp. So you, if you guys know of any other sound, theological, reformed preachers of the Word of God, um, go over to Brandon on his messenger so we can get more reformed preachers that aren't recognized or they're not, or many churches are not giving them the chance or the benefit of the doubt. Um, cause there's many preachers out there that are sound in faith, but no churches are giving them a chance. So on now mentor.com, this is it. This is their chance to get out there to start preaching the word. And so that way, um, they can equip other believers and, and tell people about the gospel through this website. So, or maybe you're a preacher of the gospel. Maybe you know a lot of things about Reformed theology and know about church history. We would love to see you there. Come on down. Make a profile. If you, if you love Reformed theology and your passion is to preach the word and to come on over, then we would love to see you over there. If you... Because the thing is, is that our goal for nailmentor.com is to have biblically sound content. That's what we want on the website. So if you know, or you yourself have sound biblical content that won't lead people astray to, for them to go into, you know, pragmatism or, um, or the ways of the world, then come on to nailmentor.com, make your profile and um, so that way you guys can um, teach people the word and that way we can have more sound biblical content. So this is your chance. If you have sound biblical content, if you have sermons that you've read, and if you have sermons that you have written and no church has given you a chance, we're going to give you a chance. We're going to give you that opportunity to preach the word on nailmentor.com. We will give you that chance. You just need to make your profile. You just need to um, put that on the website because we will be willing to give you the opportunity to give sound theology to this website. And if you can do that, that would be greatly appreciated. So this is your chance, guys. Make your profile. Make the profile name. It doesn't cost any money. Make sure you have your introduction video because that's what I had to make. Um, and make sure you know you stay committed to the to the 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 um, the broadcast. And um, you know whether you want to do a topic about worship and you just do Bible survey, and then um, then you just begin to preach and teach. And then um, Brandon Kemp will upload it to his. Is YouTube, and then you can share that with your family and friends. You could share that on your face on your YouTube page, and there you go. That way, if uh, if any if any church asks you, well, do you have any lecture videos? There it is. So just helping you guys out. If you guys really want to preach and teach in a church and um, have videos to prove it, it's one of the ways you can get in, you can get out and. 
get your videos out there. So anyways, um, I'm about to read um, Christian Tears of Pakistan. And basically talks about under the blasph blasphemy law, 295 BC, where, uh, you know, people, they, you know, how, what's the present situation in um, Pakistan right now and what Christians are going through. This is what Amir writes regarding that. So if you want to know what's going on in Pakistan with Christians, stay on here and, and you're about to hear from this book. According to Pope Hermias Benedict the, the 16th, Christians are the most persecuted group in the contemporary world. The Holy See has reported that over 100,000 Christians are violently killed annually because of some relation to their faith. According to the World Evangelical Alliance, over 200 million Christians are denied fundamental human rights solely because of their faith. Of the 100 to 200 million Christians aligned to be under assault, the majority are persecuted in Muslim-dominated nations. Pine Valley has said that Christians suffer numerically more than any other faith group or any group without faith in the world. Of the world's three largest religions, Christians are uh, allegedly the most persecuted with 80% of all acts of religious discrimination being discri being credit directed at Christians who only make up 33% of the world's population. Every year, the Christian nonprofit organization Open Doors publishes the World Watch List, a list of the top 50 countries that designates as the most dangerous for Christians. The 2018 World Watch List has the following countries as its top 10. North Korea, Afghanistan, Somalia, Sudan, Pakistan, Intria, Libya, Iraq, Yemen, and Iran. So you see, Christians all over the world face discrimination. They face persecution. All because they follow Christ. And if you read in the... The time of the Roman Empire, um, there was a guy by the name of Polycarp who was discipled by John the Disciple, the same disciple that went on the island of Patmos in the year 90 AD. Well, during that time, after uh, Polycarp goes to the Roman Colosseum, there was a back and forth debate that Christians were actually called atheists back then. Did you guys know that? Christians were actually called atheists. But then Polycarp turns back to them and says, no, you guys are the atheists. Well, after that, um, so true. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, after that whole debate happens, Polycarp then gets taken and gets burned at the stake. Now, According to historians, um, Polycarp didn't want him to be cruci to be on a cross. Honestly, the possibility would be is that because Polycarp felt unworthy to be hung on a cross, so what they do instead, so they just tied his hands behind his back, and they lit him up like torches to be burned at the stake. And he died that day. Howard Martinez, God bless. Welcome to the Q&A. If you have any questions, have a prayer request, please leave it down. I'll call six below. So you see, guys, the persecution for Christians have existed ever since the birth of the church age, back in Acts chapter 2, during the day of Pentecost. It has always existed. So the stuff that's going on in, in Pakistan, is only a reflection of what Jesus was saying in John chapter, John chapter 16, that they will hand you over, you'll be scattered, and you'll be put to death. But I tell you all these things so you would have peace. But take courage, for I have overcome the world. All from John 16 to John 16, verse 33. So guys, don't be discouraged by the persecution that's going on with Christians. I mean, pray for them and everything, but this is only 
a reflection of what happened back in history. So, all right, well, that's another thing that I have been reading. Well, and Grant Hopper, God bless. Welcome to the Q&A. If you have any questions and prayer requests, please leave it down in the comments section below. All right, well. <laughs> so, if you guys have any more questions or prayer requests or prayers or prayers, leave it, please leave it down in the comments section below. And I'll get to you as soon as possible. Um, it is 3.44. I'll probably cancel out at 4.30 because, again, I'm going to be going to a United Reform Church over in Santee, which is only about like like five, ten minutes away from here. So the church is really nearby. And uh, spend time here in the preaching of the word and to spend time with my good buddy in Christ, Dustin Smith. So that's what I'm going to be doing tonight. And by the way, another update. I'm trying to trying to grow out a beard again. And I tried it last time, but man, it gets so itchy. <sighs> I try, guys. I really try. Ah, uh, hoping for like a little goatee on here. Um, yes, and by the way, um, uh, what is it called? Is that I've I made an announcement for the G three conference, but really quickly I may as well make a, the announcement on here as well. Is that the G three conference is going to be? Uh, the big one for Atlanta, Georgia is going to be in <clears throat> October 14th to the 16th. Uh, make sure you guys are saving. Make sure you guys are saving for your plane tickets. You are saving for, um, what is it called? You are saving for plane tickets and hotel expenses as well. You guys don't want to miss it. Paul Washer is going to be preaching there. Todd Friel. And usually, uh, James, Dr. James R. White, the, 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 the author for, um, what is it called? The Forgotten Trinity. Um, so you guys don't want to miss out on that. It's going to be amazing. So again, that's October 14th to the 16th of the year 2021. And the subject they're going to be, oh, sorry. The subject that they are going to be tackling on is Christology, the study of Jesus Christ, which in fact I have been i um, actually teaching on malmentor.com. So uh, for more information, I think it's either g3conference.org or g3conference.com. You guys don't want to miss out on this. And G3 is actually partnering up with the Master's Seminary because now they've been doing workshops for expository preaching. So you guys don't want to miss out on that. It's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. So if you want to go to a place... That's like going to church for like three days in a row. This is it, guys. This is like going to church three days in a row. And 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 most of the time at these conferences, these three-day conferences, they provide free food. They provide shoe shining. And, of course, they provide awesome biblical teaching. And males and females can go. Both can go. So if you want to... If you want to go there, I would I'd greatly appreciate it. And I would greatly appreciate it as well. So <clears throat> if a church is suggested to be heretical, but the music is fantastic and aligned with Bible, should we not listen Hillsong and Elevation Worship? I really love their music. Yeah. The problem is, though, is with those movements, um... And even Justin Peters actually touches on this from the G3 conference, which is another reason why Justin Peters is also there and Todd Friel interviews him. And when he does, he gets into really the in-depth reasons of why these groups are radical. So unfortunately, yes. Um, I know we I know we love the music. I know with most people they love the music of Hillsong, Elevation, and all of that. But we really have to dig in deep to what their church really believes and what is the activity. Because if you go over, if you actually watch the activity that goes on with Bethel Church, there 
it's really, I'm just going to say it right now. It's witchcraft in Jesus' name. And here's what they're doing is, uh, they're, what they're doing is they're placing these cards down and they claim that these cards have scripture on it, but really it's just tarot cards in disguise. And what they're doing is, is they're exactly doing as the psychics and all that stuff in the Bible makes very clear in Deuteronomy that you shall not speak to a, a medium which is a, a medium is someone that speaks to the spirits and to you. So it's, it's very heretical stuff going on. And plus with um, Hillsong and Elevation. And, and if you watched actually Brandon Kip, the one of my segments, I actually exposed F Stephen Furtick because he was promoting a modalism at his church. And if you remember what modalism is, modalism is the the teaching of that, that the Father is the Son, and the Son is the Father, and the Spirit is the Son, and all that. And so, which of course is heretical, because the more that you study the Word of God, they're actually three different persons, yet they work together as one. And so they share one being, but they're three separate, three separate people. So again, I would suggest to you, Brandon, is that really look into what the church believes and then, and then basically see that it's in error. A lot of stuff that's at their churches is in error. And, you know, when people are not biblically equipped, they're going to look at the bottom and be like, oh, Hillsong, I'll check that out. Oh, it's from Bethel, I'll check that out. But the more that they dig in, and by the way, there's even... Um, two others are watching. Okay, cool. If you watch, um, what was it? If you look at the bottom uh, thing on the many of the you know worship leader pages, if you're not biblically equipped, you won't know um, you won't know what to do with those um, false movements. And plus, many of them are from what's called the NRA, the New Apostolic Movement, where then we get Benny Hinn. And I'll just tell you, Joel Osteen is even part of the new apostolic reformation. And all that. So, um, it almost seems to me like a church can't be popular and be and, and Bible believing at the same time. Um, it can, but it has to go with scripture. You know, if, because here's the thing, if you actually visit a church and, and if you actually, because here's the thing is like with Grace to You with Dr. John MacArthur, that's popular, but here's the difference between Elevation and um, Grace Community Church. With Grace Community Church, because I've been there many of times, is they actually make the Bible central. But with a place like Elevation Church, you'll notice that the many of the of the what is it called the the sermons and the messages. It's more like, and you and you and you and you. Because here's the thing: when you study the Word of God, you'll notice that even back in Ephesians chapter one, to Ephesians chapter three, you see this is what God has done in eternity past. And now this is what we are to live out in our lives. If a sermon is not communicating that at a church, then it's not really preaching the word. It's just preaching motivational speeches. It's just preaching uh, what we like to hear. But, you know, the Holy Spirit's job isn't just to preach to us what we like to hear. Sometimes we also need to get convicted. We need to feel guilty over our sin. That's why in many times of the of the Great Awakening is that with like uh, George Whitfield, you know, when he preached 
the word people were actually crying over their sin, being convicted. And most of the time, you don't see that there. You see really chaos and just, just weird things going on. So that's why it's not the fact of just saying how popular it is. But we have to ask ourselves, is it true? Is what they're saying behind the pulpit, is what they're communicating, is it biblical? Does it glorify God? And is the worship songs about me, 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 or is it about God, God, God? And I actually, I actually written a whole chapter on this, which a book I'm trying to get published still, um, on the subject. And I actually did a whole sermon on, I've written a whole sermon called um, Worship is Not a Concert. And I actually dealt with that uh, earlier when I was talking about Toby Mac. And so um, I would just say to know a good church is not based upon the popularity of the church, but rather because they truly believe in the written word of God. And not only because they truly, it's not only that they believe in the written word of God, but they know what they believe, what's in it. Because there are many Christians today that claim they believe in the Bible, but they don't know what they believe about the Bible. They don't know if there are, um, if they're Pado baptists or um, Credo Baptists, which means. Do they believe in infant baptism or do they believe in credo baptism, believer's baptism, which means being in submersion. But that's, but I would say I am a 1689 London Baptist confession guy because I believe that in the Greek, baptizo, which means submersion. And so that's what I would recommend to you, Brandon, is... Not just looking at the church because of their popularity, but seeing how sound and biblical they are in their sermons. Does it point to you or does it point to God? Because the preacher's job is to point people to God, point, point people up. And if you study the, study the book called um, Pilgrim's Progress, there was a there was a character called Evangelist, and Evangelist said to Christian that came from the city of destruction said, "I point you to the celestial city." See, that's the preacher's job is to point to the celestial city, the kingdom of God. That's what the preacher's job is to do is to is to point to you and to present you Christ is to look upon Christ. That's why, you know, when I do my now mentor uh, videos, I'm not pointing people to themselves and pointing them to Jesus saying, look upon Christ. Everything else will fade away as even Paul talks about in Colossians three, Colossians chapter three, verse two, to look not into the things of the world, but the things that are above. And then verse one makes it very clear where Christ is seated above. And so, Paul pointed people to Christ. Peter pointed people to Christ. James pointed people to Christ. And that's what we are to do as preachers and teachers of God's word. We're not to entertain the crowds. We're not to entertain the coats, the goats, but to, but to feed the sheep of Jesus Christ and to guard them from the wolves. So, okay, well, and that's how I would answer that question uh that was thank you for thank you for that brandon that's a good um question regarding um regarding the topic of worship and uh yeah because many people today they are pretty lost and when it comes to worship and also brandon kip i would i'd recommend you to buy a documentary called spirit and truth um that'll really help you out in your understanding of worship because they really walk you through the old testament to the new testament and to now a days it's re it's so well done i actually will i watched the whole thing probably like twice and i'll probably watch it again sometime again with my in-laws or somebody else 
So that's what I would recommend you to do is watch Spirit and Truth. Um, that that documentary will help you out to understand what worship actually means in its biblical context. And you'll see how pragmatism entered into the church back in the the 19, I believe in the early 19th century, if I remember correctly, during the time of the 1800s, they start, instead of making it a regulative worship like it was in the Reformation and the Puritans and all that, they started to now adopt it to be more emotionally experience rather than regulatively experience of worship as in we will not go we will not go against what is written because see back worship back then in the time of the reformation and the time of the puritans they did all that they could to obey the scriptures when it came to doing worship services nowadays it's not regulative worship and it's just Throw a worship service however you want, but they don't go with what the Bible actually says. And that's why there's so much confusion in the church. That's why there's so much confusion of why preaches, preaching is important because many, many people today in the church, they don't have a foundation. They don't have, they don't understand history. They don't understand who God truly is and therefore they don't know who they are. And that's why, you know, it's so very important to construct worship the way the Bible instructs and not the way the culture demands. And if we can get back to those regulative principles of worship, um, we can see that then it's tr a church that is truly biblical and not a church that just goes at the whims of uh, secular um, a secular way or um, in a secular thing as in making the church look like a, a club or making the church look like a dance house party or trying to make it into something that's trying to attract the world because and if you really think about it, because I've grown up in the church you now for so many years. And I look back at the times when I went to Awanas and all that. And I just remember nobody taught me the, if I remember correctly, nobody taught me the holiness of God. No Awanas teacher taught me the doctrines of grace. Nobody taught me, you know, that Jesus Christ was an Old Testament character as he was as a New Testament character. Nobody ever taught me that. I had to learn that. But you know what? I just wished when I was a child, I would they would have taught me all this stuff in Awanas. They would have taught me all this stuff. And that's why um, Brandon Kip on the nowmentor.com, I, I want to avoid this problem. That's why I'm bringing all this stuff into your website so then we can avoid those issues so then people have a right understanding of who God is and not have a whacked out view of who God is. So um, again, we shouldn't base a church or base a musical group upon a church musical group based upon popularity, but based upon is what they're saying true and according to the scriptures. Um, there's a, there's a really good, I, I can, I can actually recommend you, um, some great worship, uh, bands for you. Uh, one of them is, um, Sovereign Grace Music. Oh, great God. Um, the song that my wife walked down the aisle to. Um, the other one is um, Keith and Chris and Getty that's, that wrote that great famous song, um, In Christ Alone. Um, you know, there's 
there's a lot of great um, citizens and saints. That's another one. You brought me back to life. You have you have known my heart. Um, there's a lot of good sound theological content out there that you can really look to. Phil Wilkham, yeah. Um, he's got Phil Wilkham's got a lot of great songs. Um, I love my favorite song by Phil Wilkham is This Is Amazing Grace. That's actually mm, my personal favorite. Um, Brent Brian and Kate Torway. Oh, okay. Um, oh, what about Chris Rice? Chris Rice is very good. Chris Rice did the A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Um, when he did, when he did that, um, he did, um, what is it? He remade those hymns on that, uh, what is it called? On that album was really good. So, yeah, um, so yeah, there's a lot of good, um, stuff. And of course, you know, you can look back into the hymnals. The hymnals have such great theological content in there. Um, you know, and that's what I recommend too, is, you know, go to a church that has that sing the hymns. Cause you know, when you start, and of course, you know, Colossians chapter three, sing hymns and spiritual songs make melody to one another to the lord there's even some churches that sing that literally open up the bible and they sing from the psalms which i think that's awesome and encouraging so there's a lot of good theological content out there but But, you, you know, you just, you don't get so concerned about who is popular and who isn't. You just want to stick with songs that, do they have a high view of God? Do they have a high view of scripture? Do they, and I'll give an example of this. I remember I was watching a, I was watching an interview from the choir conductor from Grace Community Church. And this is what he said in an interview when someone asked him, um, how, do you, how do you bring people into your choir, into your orchestra? And I'll never forget what he said. This is what he said. Is that I asked them, do you love the God of the scriptures more than the music that you sing? Um, because here's the thing is that is that because if you just love the music that you know you're doing and it's okay to love music, but if you do the music and you don't do for the sake because you really love God, and it just shows that. It's really you that's the show. It's not about the Lord. It's not about him. It's really about you and you're pointing to yourself. And so that's why, guys, you know, the stuff that you're listening to, look into their church and really see, is the songs that they sing, that's a glorify God, or is it about entertainment? So that's, uh, of course, for Brandon Kemp as well, but for many others as well that are looking into it. And uh, Dustin Smith, God bless. Welcome to the Q&A. If you have any questions, have a prayer request, please leave it down in the comment section below. And by the way, I saw that you, Dustin Smith, you um, you messaged me on Messenger. I couldn't get back to you because I'm, I'm doing this right now. Um, because... Uh, I'm busy answering questions, and uh, and we got into a deep subject about worship music and how we are to listen the the stuff that we are listening to. Make sure we do we worship we uh we do research 
to what our church is given to us. And it's just better to be at a church where they do the hymns and the psalms because then it's po constantly pointing to the Lord and not pointing to ourselves. And so that's what we were dealing with and all that. So, but yes, I did see your messages, Dustin Smith, but I'm just, I'm very busy right now. And it was something regarding on... Um, they, they couldn't go because you left your jacket back, so. I saw it, but I, I'm just been busy with doing this stuff, so. Oh, uh, right, guys, if you have any more questions on prayer requests or prayer reports, please leave it down in the comments below, and I'll get to you as soon as possible. So, oh, man. Oh, it's, my throat's feeling dry. <laughs> um... But yes, guys, if, uh, let's let's see. Um, it's 410, so you guys got 20 more minutes to uh, send your questions and send your prayer requests because I'm planning to go to the United Reformed Church. Really, the New Age Christian music is garbage, and Bethel is giving a bad title for that by giving it a trans... Giving it a trans. Yes, thanks, Blake. I'm sorry, didn't see Centel now. Yes, good topic, Blake. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly with just like as I was saying, you know, with Bethel and all of that, you know. Bethel is allowing witchcraft into their church. They're doing the whole tarot card things. They were even having I now I remember. They had like jewelry, and apparently the ju apparently they're saying that the jewelry uh, speaks to you and all this stuff. It's bizarre, guys. Don't support Bethel music at all. Don't support that movement because it's witchcraft. And Bill Johnson, who's the pastor of that church, was even saying that when Jesus was on earth, he was just a regular Christian. I mean, that's heretical. And if you watch the... The videos I'm doing for nowmentor.com um, for, what is it called? The, for nowmentor.com on um, the subject of Christology, you would know that that's just not true. Jesus Christ, as we talked about as many times as I've said, he's the Theratios Theratios, the truly God, truly man. So that's right, kenosis. Uh, actually... We're going to get into that in our next session the on Christology on NowMentor.com. Tomorrow at 6.30, we're going to explain what the kenosis actually means. We're going to get into that um, on the next session. We're going to get into how, what it means, what kenosis means. And it kind of refers back to, you know, the virgin birth. It regards back why you have to die. Whole thing. Kenosis is actually very, very important teaching in the Bible. Very important when it comes to systematic theology. So, you don't want to miss that. For, ah, for, uh, for the systematic theology course. All right, well, um, any any more questions, any more prayer requests, any more prayer supports, go ahead, go ahead and leave it down in the comments section below. And I'll get to you as soon as possible. Um, if not, uh, let's see. Do I have enough time for this? Yes, I do. 4.13. So um, I'm going to share with you guys also what I've been reading. Um... So, uh, also, what I've been doing is reading a, uh, doing a Greek study in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4, Hebrews chapter, the book of Hebrews. And so, and I was reading on um, verse 7, Hebrews chapter 2, and it says, You have made him. Uh, for a little while lower than the angels, you have crowned him with glory and honor and have appointed him over the works of your hands. So now if you remember back in Genesis chap in Genesis chapter one, that the, that the man was to, 
Um, subdue, which means to rule. That's what it's referring to, that God um, made them a little lower than the angels, the angelios, the messengers. You've crowned him with glory and honor. So then we go here. Um, it's basically crown him with glory and honor. And, and it's, of course, not talking about glory as in, you know, the glory of God and, you know, uh, his weight and his light. But more like because they're creating the image of God. More like because they, um, God sees them more than his creation because as we know the, the gorilla can't talk like we can uh and as dr james white puts it that the difference between humans and cats is their ability to reason so we can also reason we can move our hands um we can pick up things while a cat cannot pick up things we are not our ancestry is not from apes and gorillas and all that but it's from god himself so and also it even goes on to say and have appointed him over the works of your hands so as we know psalm 19 1 says that the heavens declare the glory of god and the handiwork is in the firmament so it's referring to the handiwork as in the creation so um and appointed is to means in the original greek to set in order. So in other words, God set in order man to rule over every living thing, all the creatures and the plants and all of that. So therefore, that's why we can enjoy cheeseburger. That's why we can enjoy um, petting animals and all that. So, and so, and basically what Hebrews is about to do is say, just as man was made low, a little lower than the angels, so is Christ. He was made into man. And so, when you start studying, again, when you start studying that God has done all these things, this is how we are supposed to live. And now because God allows us to live and given us his breath of life. Now we in return live for him. Now in in return we breathe for him. In return we take care of the world for him. Because it all belongs to him in the end. He created you. He's given his breath into you. So therefore we are to live and that's why even in the Westminster Confession it says what is man's chief end? To glorify God and to enjoy him forever. So that's why, you know, when you're living on this earth and when you see just the beauty of creation and all that, you just look back to the Lord and say, God, I'm going to do all this for you because you've done all this for me. So that's what I was reading upon in... Um, Ephesians chapter, I mean, Hebrews chapter two or seven. So, um, so I was basically doing, and we got Tara, where I know, hello and God bless. Welcome to Q and A. If you have any questions and prayer requests, please leave it down in the comments below. I'll get to you as soon as possible. Ah, uh, and, uh, I see that, um, they're my old pastor. Oh, wonderful. Just uh, but if you invite any beyond, anybody on, Dustin, make sure that um, they don't turn it. In, if we do get into discussions and maybe debates and all that, um, we don't turn into slander. If it turns into slander, I'm gonna have to block them, and I don't want to block anybody. But however, I'm gonna have to do it because, well, they're not willing to be Christ-like character. You're gone. You just can't, you can't, out of all the years of preaching and teaching and, and, mis and, and ministry work for seven years now, I can truly say that you just cannot get so emotionally attached to people because you're dealing with sinners. 
sinners are going to sin. Yeah, like, so, okay, let me explain what slander means. Slander is when you're putting somebody down, you're putting their character down rather than their ideas. Debating is not putting somebody down, it's putting down their ideas. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15, But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, be ready to make a defense for anyone who asks you with meekness and respect. And then Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 says, And let no unwholesome word come out of your mouths, but to give grace to those who hear. So the Bible does not encourage slander. The Bible does not encourage cussing at people. And putting them down. It does not. Rather. Um, oh well. I'll give an example. This guy by the name of Pablo. Yes. Exactly. James 4.11. This guy by the name of Pablo. And. What he decided to do was. T say on the Q&A. Well you're such a big man behind the screen. And I was like, and I told him, well, you just don't, you just don't know about my life. You say it because you don't know about my life because I've actually confronted people in real life and I've actually done that. You've seen me, Dustin. You've seen it. You've seen me confront Patrick over the phone. I've confronted many people. I've confronted people at a Southern Baptist Association at a meeting once. Uh, Thomas Pittman, God bless. Welcome to Q&A. If you have any questions, I have prayer requests. Please leave it down in the comments below. I even confronted someone because he was like, oh, well, that's not really why we're there and da, 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 da. And I told him like, yeah, but where's the, but what about the Bible? The Bible's foundational. He's like, well, we're not really there and da, 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 da. As soon as I said, well, I believe David Jeremiah's an okay preacher. And he's like, those are fighting words. So... I've confronted people many of times. It's just now I want now I'm just being a lot wiser who I confront and and if it's worth it. So that's what I've learned over the years. Yeah, that's false slander judgment. Exactly. Yep. Yes, it is. And sadly, there's people out there that have nothing better to do but to slander people and to put people down. That's not the way Christ commands us to love others, and that's not the way Christ commands us to get into discussions. Just isn't. Just isn't, but people just won't listen. All right, Kenny BUC, God bless. Welcome to Q&A. If you have any questions, have any prayer requests, please leave down in the comments section below. I'll get to you as soon as possible. All right, 422. I uh, guys got 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Three. So, guys, got seven minutes left. Um, if we manage to get one more question, I might, I might make the Q and A go extend a little bit more. But if we don't get any questions um, during the time of four twenty-two, I'm going to end the Q and A session. But if we do. Then we'll extend it. I'll extend it probably to 435. I don't know. See so what happens, guys. Will we get more questions or will we not? We'll have to see. So, in the meantime, I'm going to wait. Sorry, my beard's a bit itchy right now. And Dan Simcar, God bless. Welcome to Q&A. If you have any questions, have any prayer requests, please leave it down in the comments section below. I'll get to you as soon as possible. Thanks and God bless. So, yeah, I mean, guys, it could be any questions. It could be controversial questions. It could be, you know, something about social justice. It could be about how do we share the gospel to homosexuals. What is of God the Father decreed? Uh... You know, uh, how can we blaspheme the Holy Spirit or any of that, you know? Um, any questions, any prayer requests, 
any praise reports, um, go ahead. You're more than welcome to put it down in the comment section below. All right, we got Luis Campos. God bless. We'll go in the Q&A. If you have any questions on prayer requests, please leave it down in the comment section below, and I'll get to you as soon as possible. So, um, And so hopefully I can get back to you. Um, on those on those questions so yeah um and uh if and also if we don't um finish by 4 30 i will close down the not close down permanently but just for today the q a session because at around i think the church starts i'm gonna have to look at my pamphlet again but i think Church starts at 6 p.m., if I remember correctly. And so I'm going to visit that church and uh, um, see. So we got Wade Ferris. God bless. Welcome to the Q&A. If you have any questions, have any prayer requests, uh, please leave it down in the comment section below. And I'll get to you as soon as possible. Uh, let me see real quickly, guys. Uh, 425. You guys got five minutes left. So if we get a question in in the time of that five minutes Spanned, um, we'll extend it to 435. It's the latest I can do. But if I don't get any more, if I don't get any more questions, um, you know, uh, during that time, then 430, I'm shutting down. Then I got to go talk to a friend and get ready for. The next church service so hopefully to hear from you guys another another question oh, regarding any subjects regarding um uh, yeah and also could be something about my you know about my practical life. Um, of course, it could be a theological question, a controversial question. Um, so, you know, as, as you know, I would, um, that's how I usually do things here. And so if you have any questions, I'm going to prayer request, please leave down in the comments below and I will get to you as soon as possible. And if not, I will shut down the Q&A. And so, um, also too, is that for the, for the no tour, um, sessions and everything, we've been trying to figure out a bunch of bugs for it. Cause we've been, we've been trying to use the screen recording app. So if you guys can to keep it in prayer, that all the bugs will be fixed. Um, if you guys know of anybody else that is good with, um, electronics and all that, we would love you guys to help us out too um and all that so this is it guys this is your opportunity for to to serve and to preach and all that here we go we got another question from a good friend brandon kemp how do you know god's calling on your life on your life independent from what the bible already tells us um well, the thing is, is that I'm going to have to use the Word of God, of course. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed by the ways of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so you'll know that perfect, good, acceptable will of God is. So I, I still have to stick with, with, with the Scripture to say, but what I will say also is that I remember one time a, a testimony was shared that um, you will know it's the will of God of what you're doing that he'll provide you. See, when you're doing something for the Lord and you see God providing in your life, that means it's of God's will. I remember there was a pastor from London, England that came to San Diego 
And all he came was, was with two suitcases. That's all he came with. But however, God provided, God provided, God provided, and then he planted a church. Sadly, there was some controversial stuff going on in the church, and I can't make too much mention about it because I actually debated him on a couple of key issues. But how do you know that God, uh, that God has a calling on your life? It's also that um, you will see that there is a sense of urgency to do it. You'll notice that there's a passion to it. There is a, um, what is it called? There is a, um, all this, but most importantly though, is that we have to understand that nothing is independent of God's word because in the end, everything points back to scripture. And that's what we must realize because if we don't make the Bible the central foundation of our lives, if we don't cling on to what's called sola scriptola and total scriptola, then we are not truly living out what Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Psalm 119, verse 9, how can a young man keep his, word, his, his way pure by keeping it to your word? And Psalm 119, verse 11 um, I have treasured your word in my heart, so I'm not sin against you. And so our lives have to be, um, our lives have to be in connection with the word of God. Um, you grow a passion because you say, I want to do this because this is what scripture actually teaches. I want to go and feed the homeless and I want to share the word of God with the poor. I want to go to these places because James one twenty seven is uh, that um, bless the true religion, this in the sight of our God and Father is this, is to visit the orphans and the widows and be un, un, undesignable from the world. And so ultimately is that, how do we know um, besides God's word is that God will put the desire in you. And Psalm 37 verse 8 says that if we delight ourselves in the Lord, he will give us the desire of our hearts. And what's that? The desire that comes from him. The desire that ultimately will bring him glory. The desire to serve him more. Because see, the thing is, is that through the empowering of the Holy Spirit, that's what wants us to obey God more. That's what wants us to follow the will of God. That's what wants it's what helps us to live out a godly life. And so I would say that, honestly, if you want to be a true biblical Christian, I would say you can't really do anything independent of God's word because ultimately all of it goes back to the scriptures. The final authority goes back to it. The only thing we know outside of scripture per se is that the God uses his people. But again, that goes back to Proverbs 16 about how God answers through the tongues of the tongue of man. And so, because you'll notice that God uses people, you'll notice that God um, uses the believers and unbelievers for his glorious purposes. And so, ultimately, in the end, is that you can't really know God's calling um, independent of Scripture. But you'll notice that God will start providing if it is part of his calling. If he's called you to preach the word, um, he's going to equip you. If he's called you to do website, um, then he'll equip you. It's all basically how God equips you. And plus, I would recommend Brandon Kip to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 to 14 about all that, but make sure you read it in its context on the church of Corinth and what they were going through. 
and all that um, because the Holy Spirit's given us gifts. And uh, my gift is, you know, preaching and teaching. So, uh, yeah, you just you just see how the Lord's providing and you just see uh, this goes goes back to Scripture. It just does. Okay, Kevin uh, Callis, God bless. Welcome to the Q&A. If you have any questions on prayer requests, please leave it down in the comment section below, and uh, we'll get to you as soon as possible. So, uh, all right. We'll take uh, one more question by Brandon Kelp, and then we will close the Q&A. So go ahead, um, Brandon Kemp. Give us uh, one more question. And then... Uh, and And then I will get to as soon as possible. And plus, you know, if you watched um, God's Outlaw, you know, the life of um, his best friend told him, uh, how do I told him, Willie, oh, William Tyndale, there we go, that um, you'll know the will of God when you look into the word of God. So, uh, okay, how do you know if something is difficult or you are fighting for something you shouldn't be. So, two things to take note of. So you're asking, how do you know if something is difficult or you are fighting for something you shouldn't be? You'll notice if it goes against the will of God, you'll notice that... Um, if it's not bringing God glory, if it's uh, if you're pursuing this, but you see that God ultimately in the end isn't being praised and honored, then it's not worth fighting for. Man was created for God, and so ultimately in the end, and you look at first. Well, let me even read from First Chronicles sixteen about that. First Chronicles sixteen. Um, Stephen Bolin, God bless, welcome to the Q&A. If you have any questions on prayer requests, please leave it down in the comments section below. Actually, this is going to be the last question that I'm going to be dealing with. So, so in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, so we read, and David is carrying the Ark of the Covenant back to the people because he's, re he's uh, retrieving it back to the Phil from the Philistines, who... Um, was trying to steal the Ark of the Covenant and uh, and, uh, and all that, but of course God wasn't having it. So that's why he used David to destroy the them and all that. So he starts putting a tent for it. And uh, First Chronicles, but then all of a sudden you see in First Chronicles sixteen, God uses David. Starting off in verse 27, Splendor and majesty are before God. Strength and joy are his place. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in holy array or in holy alignment. Tremble before him all the earth. Indeed, the world is firmly established and it will not be moved. So you see, regarding all that, does it really bring God glory of what you're doing? If it's not, then it's not worth fighting for. The only time you fight is if it goes against who God is. The only time you fight if is if you are doing it for the glory of God. If it does not, then it's not a healthy situation. I remember the time, and I'll even give a practical application to this, is I remember talking with um, Dr. James R. White, the author of the book, The Forgotten Trinity. He told me something really good, and I'll never forget it. He said that um, when you know difference between talking to someone that is going to be reasonable and running into a, a brick wall. And I think that's so important to note because 
you know, we just think, oh, you know, if I just, if I just keep debating with this people, this, this person, he'll keep changing. But that's not the case. There's going to be times where you just need to leave that situation because it's not a healthy situation. There are times, there's many times in my life where I had to make difficult decisions that I had to leave something because it was unhealthy for me. So basically the biblical advice would be, Brandon Kip, is that um, if it's a situation where it's just seems like it's a dead end wall, leave, don't do it. Leave that situation. It's not a healthy situation. Leave and don't go, don't come back and move on. You don't, cause here's the thing. If you're still on here, Brandon Cup, problems are like putting a quarter at the center of the palm. If you keep going like this, if you keep going to the same problem over and over again, and you just keep, and it just seems like you're going this, it's not worth it. So that's why instead of going around, 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 around the problem, instead you go, go a different direction. That's what you have to do. Now, I don't know, uh, Brandon Kip, maybe it's regarding the website. Maybe it's regarding something deep in your family. I don't know, but if it's an unhealthy situation, it's not worth fighting for leave. It is not a healthy situation. You will keep getting hurt. You will keep being abused. You'll keep, because uh, tell you the truth, I've had 12, I, I have throughout my rebellious years in high school, um, you know, well, regarding Regarding the website, I think, I think that's, I think it's a great thing that you're doing because it's giving people an opportunity and a chance to preach. But I mean, like regarding in relationships, regarding in life situations, um, no, but with the whole website and everything, I think so. I think he, I think God is helping you in the website. It's just, you know, he's. He's buffering you. Um, and if it wasn't God's will, you know, um, you wouldn't be going through, but the, you wouldn't be going through difficult, difficult situation. You wouldn't be going through this. And I think, you know, if you just, uh, if you keep going with this website and everything, and you know, you keep, uh, you know, inviting people to do it, um, don't give up. I think I think the website is is great, and plus, you know, through that website, I, we're able to get the you know the 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 teachings through YouTube. And you know, I think with all this, you know, honestly, Brandon Kemp, you've been one of the most supportive people that. At, that I've ever worked with. Um, when I was doing La Mesa Healthcare Center, you know, people left me little by little because they weren't as biblical as I thought they were. Where basically I preached for six years. And so I would say, you know, if you're, if you're doing, if uh, plus, you know, these videos and everything with systematic theology and all that. Because here's another thing, you know, God doesn't reveal his sovereign plan right away. He just wants us to trust in him. He wants us to cling on to him and, and, and look on to him. That's why I've encouraged many people on nowmentor.com to look on to Christ. But when the time comes, there's going to be people that are going to look for a free thing for systematic theology and they're going to come and look on to nowmentor.com there and they're going to be like oh, you guys are doing systematic theology i've been looking for a free thing to do systematic theology so um you know brandon kip don't don't give up you know um read through romans chapter 5 verses 1 to 5 sometime and you'll see how god uses 
you know, suffering to teach us and how it te teaches us, suffering teaches us um, to grow in a godly character. <gasps> Matt Grace. I haven't seen Matt Grace in a long time. God bless you and welcome to the Q&A. If you have any questions, have any prayer requests, please leave it down in the comment section below. Matt Grace, uh, me and him and Nick Cronky, all of us used to hang out together. Now, uh, I forgot where he's at now, but um, it was awesome. We went through the first Clement of Rome at uh, Nick Cronky's apartment. Um, but wow, it's just, those were good times. I remember that. Kind of miss that, having a study, but it's okay. All right, well, um, I think that'll do it for this Q&A session, guys. Um, and I think regarding all this, I want to end it on that passage. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. Because maybe right now, you're going through a time of stress. Maybe you're going through a time where... You know, you don't know what to do at this point. You don't know why you're going through a terrible job. You don't know why it is that um, things are not going right for you. Well, throughout all the years of doing ministry, I can honestly say God teaches us through suffering. I had to come into terms of this. And even Dr. Jeff, uh, Pastor Jeff Durbin even did a message on this called Suffering Well. And so, but it, what I'm going to use is Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. This is what it says. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained our instruction by faith into this grace in which we stand and we exalt in the hope of the glory of God. All right. And not only this, but we also exalt in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance and perseverance, proven character and proven character hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who is given to us. And so, guys, what I want to encourage you is that because you've been justified by faith, because the Holy Spirit is poured out in your hearts, that's how we grow in godly character. That's how we grow in proving character because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Your trials doesn't make you weaker. Your trials makes you stronger as an individual in Christ. Your trials, it was, helps to prove your character and it proves your hope because then you see that. Do you remember when God brought you out of that misery? Did you remember that God brought you out of it? And do you remember the lesson that you've learned? So guys, from a theological perspective, don't forget that God, when God takes you through suffering, it is only to prove your character. It is only to bring you better hope. So when you go into a bigger trial, you'll know that God is there. You'll know that God eternally lives in you. And that therefore, because the Holy Spirit has been poured out within our hearts, what God has given to us. So therefore, it represents also his love and also Romans 5.8. Going furthermore, but God demonstrates his own love toward us that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. And there, and there lies our hope for going through trials. So don't give up. Keep fighting the good fight. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. And despite of what you go through, everything will fall through. And don't forget James 1.12. Blessed are those that perceive under trial, for they receive a crown of righteousness to those that love Christ. All right, God bless, and I hope you all do. I hope you all have a great one. Have a great rest of the Lord's day. God bless, and bye bye.